All right, my dude. So I recently, um, I am now qualified for uh, live streams. Um, I think it hasn't been 24 hours since I got to 50 subs. So I think you got to wait until 24 hours after you get 50 subs and then you can live stream on your channel. I think my uh, type of video is more compatible with live stream. So that is exciting. But we are getting in, well, not definitely not in the nitty gritty yet, but uh, getting into uh, S2. Pretty exciting. Certain people popping up. So. Yeah, I've gotten a little bit inactive the past few days because a lot of crazy things has been happening in my life. Uh, my car just got stolen. So, uh, I know my haters are going to pop bottles. The people... <laughs> pop bottles. But, yeah. My car got stolen. But um, and I just do state minimum uh, insurance because uh, car gets stolen, you just buy another one. But I don't. I'm, this is not advice. Don't take my advice. Because the way I do things, don't do it. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> this is not advice. But, uh, yep, yeah, my car got stolen. Thought it got towed. I kept harassing, calling all the towing companies and harassing the impound. Just determined because it had keyless entry. So I was like... The chances of it getting stolen are so, uh, so small. But, uh, see, what happened was my, uh, what happened was it had, so somebody hacked, I guess they hacked my key fob because the car just turned off. And all of a sudden, my key fob would not work on my car. And uh, so and it and my car shut down in the middle of a busy intersection. So, you know what I mean? Um, wound up having to leave it there while I was trying to figure out what was wrong with it. Why it just shut down and why the key all of a sudden didn't work. And uh by the time I made it back to the car, the car was gone. So my guess is they used some type of high techity tech gizmos to uh copy. I've been searching. Like I asked the police, like how could they have stolen it? Like the car would have to. So they have what's called relay attacks for the keyless the the keyless entry. And, uh, I'm like, but, uh, before I left, so it's weird. I took the, uh, before I left the car, I took the car battery out because I was trying to hard reset it because I had Googled that sometimes you have a computer error. So I took the battery out, but whoever, so it's funny because I took the battery out and I locked it. So if they, you know, they hacked the key and copied the key, right? They would have, and I locked it. So 
to get in, you need to get in with the keyless entry. You need power to the vehicle or it's not going to work. So they was really fiending hard for that vehicle because they physically unlock in order for them to drive off with that car. They had to physically unlock the car. And this car is like in the middle of like two interstates. You know, there's an entrance. And, uh, and uh, there's an entrance to the interstate and, uh, and, and people coming off the interstate and then two, like f a four way. And this car was parked in the middle of all that. And somebody went in this four way intersection with, with two interstates and all that traffic and stole my car. I was like, so this person literally physically broke into my car. OK. Then they put a battery. They had a battery that fit my car. They put a battery in there, and that's the only way because you can't uh, start it without a battery. So they put a battery in that car, uh, broke in it physically, put a battery in that car, hacked my key while I was near it. So they, oh, my God. Yeah. And then they, uh, and they stole the vehicle. Uh, yeah, so people suck. Uh, it may be recovered. I'm not going to get my hopes, hopes up. Recovery rate, some sources say one in five cars get recovered, but then I see online that the recovery rate nationwide is like 48%, which is, uh, you know, one in two, one in three best worst case scenarios. So that don't mathematically that makes no sense. Yeah, that makes no sense mathematically. Let's see. Is Eugene in an abandoned finish? Oh, we about to run out of time for I'm going to go ahead on and start that because I always look at that. And then. Um. before the end oh i got 11 minutes bro it's too late i can't participate this gets on my nerves bro you that's the soonest i can start it bro it's 15 minutes you look like i missed that one dang soon as some oh my god soon as i uh Turn my head away from this game. I miss something that important. So, is this over? No, it's not. I don't see anything moving. Okay, so it looks like we're back in third place. So, I think I'm going to go ahead on and do some zombies. So, in this event, you got to keep killing zombies. But yeah, that's what I'm dealing with right now. Car got, car got towed, and uh, trying to get into some different ways. You know, season change, uh, getting into different ways to make money, to make my daily bread. Uh. Make my daily bread. Yep. <laughs> news break is my uh, news app. It gives you like breaking. It give you some wild news on that app. Bro, this city, that city is, uh, this city is something. But I looked up, I looked up, um, my car, <laughs> and it is on the list. 
It is on the list of the most stolen car in this country. So I'm like, okay. But they did all of that to steal that car. Oh my God. I'm more upset that I had a bunch of tools in there. I had my, uh, I had my, uh, torque wrench in there. I had air pumps. I had an air pump. I had, uh, I had some vintage hoodies. I had my, I had, I used to, a long time ago, way back when, I worked at Domino's, and I had a Domino's jacket that I will probably never be able to replace, and I had vintage hoodies that um, I bought offline, and I'm pretty sure they're not available for sale anymore. And I also had a... Uh, That's about it. I think that's all I had in there. Some hoodies, my tools. I'm more mostly upset about my tools. I need my tools. But yeah. I don't know. Maybe I might get upset later or depressed later. But uh, actually, um, when uh, I realized, when it was confirmed, because there was a point where I was like, there's no way it's stolen. There's no way it's stolen. And I was like, it, they would have to have to do this, like I told you. But no, it got stolen. I confirmed that yeah it got stolen uh I didn't like cry or anything I actually felt relieved <laughs> that's weird yeah I was using that car to uh, do some business That was a business car, and now I can't. And the business I was doing that car, doing in that car, um, had really been a pain in the butt cheeks lately. And I guess maybe that's why I feel relieved, because now I no longer, now, you know, I've been forced out of that business. <laughs> My other car is, my other cars are trucks and they're not, uh, they're not really good for, uh, they're not really good for what I was using that car for. So, uh, what else? I think in, uh, I think in a, in a little bit I'll probably cause the car I got was used and it was a gift and so I may go I may go ahead and get um, I may get something new but if I get something new I'm not going to use a new car for what I was it's weird cause if you it's weird cause if you get a used car and then you use that used car for business you know used cars you know they don't tell you this but your used car with heavy use is likely to not last more than a year or so used cars just because it's cheaper so in a lot of my videos i like to talk about how uh you know, be smart with your money. Buying the cheapest option is not always the smartest option. Because it's a reason why 
the value of that car is lower. You're not getting, you know what I mean? If you spent $5,000 for a car, nine times out of 10, you're getting $5,000 worth of car. <laughs> so, you know, buying used is not going to stop you from, you know, you're either going to be paying a note, you're going to be paying that high brand new car premium you know what i mean if somebody even puts two thousand miles you don't know what they did to that car during those two thousand miles so you're inheriting somebody else's headache you understand so not big on used cars unless it's your own because Cars that last the longest, it seems like uh, you, the ones that you buy new <laughs> and only you drive it. Soon as somebody else starts driving the car, the car, it fits like a glove to somebody else's driving. So the computers, the car adapts to how how specific people drive it. So when other people drive it. It's going to start breaking quick. You understand? It's like. So. Uh, if it has previous owners. Just. Uh, advice. And if you want to do it. Use the car to do anything. To, to make money. Or whatever. Preferably try not to do anything. That requires you. Uh. To move around too much in a car. Okay. Six million thirty six. Okay, so that's from the survival challenge. Yeah, not a used car advocate. Not a used car advocate. Um, every used car I've ever had uh, has given me problems. Uh, unless you buy a collectible that only has just a, a few miles. And it's a collectible. You're not driving... You may drive it a few days every now and then, but cars as collectibles is if I mean if you if that's how see I like if you're gonna collect stuff I feel like collecting cars is kind of ghetto like <laughs> have some class and collect paintings collect rare artifacts like civilized folks you know what i mean reupholster your house with quality materials that you may be able to sell that may increase the value of the house and that you may be able to sell later like you understand if you have a wooden fireplace Destroy the wooden fireplace and put a marble fireplace that would add a bunch of value to the home. You understand? Oh boy. You never know when you might have to sell your home. A forest fire starts or something, and all of a sudden you out on your ass. But then if a forest if a a forest fire starts and it burns up your income somehow, I'll put it that way. But if a forest fire starts and burns up your house, then obviously that putting a marble <laughs> a marble fireplace is not going to, is not gonna help your situation. But yeah, you know.
most affluent people. And all affluent people be having the same collection. They have the the Range Rover, one Range Rover, one Porsche. Uh something that goes really fast, like a supercar ish type vehicle and and the SUV and well the Range Rover is the SUV so a, a truck you know what I mean so mm, I saw this so I saw this video on Facebook where this dude just had a whole bunch of all white just brand new uh GMC like the 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 truck you know probably run about 40k like it wasn't something that you could not get it it, it kind of remind to put it into frame of reference like when i mentioned that uh you know anybody could get a credit card and just spend and spend and spend on this game and that's their strategy for winning um same thing with this guy who bought all these brand new cars he had a collection. He had like 20, 30. He had like 30 cars and they were all white. He had like three different trucks. It was the same brand. Three different uh, GMC trucks, I think. Same brand, all white. I think there was just different years. So, And it's like, okay, if I wanted, if... Uh, if uh a uh, if you know the manager at Kroger's <laughs> you understand if the GM at Kroger's wanted a truck like that they could go and secure a loan <laughs> they could save their money get a down payment and get a loan for the rest like that's not that expensive I would collect something that. Uh, if I, which I do, ha I do technically have a collection because I do have cars that I don't, uh, that don't get used. Uh, but, uh, like I said, trucks. So, I mean, they do get used, but like I have a diesel truck and it, uh, the gas mileage is so terrible. Unless I'm hauling something, it's pocked. Then you need battery maintainers for these cars, cause if they sitting, uh, car battery gonna die. So, uh, diesel truck. I thought the diesel, diesel. I always thought diesel was cool, but ain't nothing cool about the price. Now. When we had Hurricane Katrina, they didn't have any gas, but they had the diesel gas. But see, a lot of diesel engines, you know, they still required a regular uh, gas. Like, they'll have a regular gas, uh, 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 um, a uh, place where you put in a tank. That's what I want to say. A, a regular gas tank and a um, and a diesel gas tank. And you would need both. I used to drive box trucks at one time. And that's the kind of tanks that uh, box trucks have. They have... It's a... It's a hybrid system, like, I guess it uses the regular gas when you are at low RPM, but then when you're at the higher RPMs, it uh, seeps in the diesel. You know, it's certain things that unless you drove a truck of trucks. You would have no clue about. You would think that all diesel cars are just diesel, but no, they have trucks that run on both diesel and uh, and regular gas. They do goofy stuff with cars. Personally, I'm not a 
I'm not I'm just not a car person. You know what I mean? If everything is still optimized for horse and carriage, that's what I would have, horse and carriage. You know, at the end of the day, devices that run on electricity. Yes, I know the car is gas powered, but the actual the the uh a lot of the components the gas is used to produce electricity and a lot and the vehicle relies on a lot of electrical components the electricity in your home is probably also produced by gas or coal okay electricity is not just some magical thing that you can pull out of out of nowhere you have to generate it via combustion or uh, or wind or dams but it's not uh, to generate electricity is not free and it is not effective I mean well, well it's not uh, it's not free and it's not like super efficient that's the word it's not efficient because you it takes more it takes more uh, resources to generate electricity it takes more natural gases and all of that to generate electricity than it does to uh just have combustion like a train with that's that just runs on uh that just runs on coal or whatever. Uh, a train that runs on coal is actually greener, would be greener than its electric counterpart. Because guess what? To generate the electricity on that electric train, you're going to have to burn all kind of stuff and you have to constantly burn it. So, which you're going to have to continue to burn coal. So. That has a steam power. But see, electricity, you know, the the line between witchcraft and is this something? The line between witchcraft and natural is blurred. Because there are few natural um very few natural implications. So uh, this is going to go over a lot of people's head. Like people are going to listen to me say electricity is witchcraft. Oh, it's just this crazy. You know what I'm saying? But you don't, you don't get it. With the, the, the act of rebellion. Rebellion is witchcraft rebellion if you rebel against god or whatever your um, whatever you believe in is your creator that is witchcraft that is what several um that is what several scholarly sources define as the archaic meaning of witchcraft witches hate the natural order of things and they constantly want to create some artificial um, way to cut corners and essentially rebel. If you a crime Let's against go out there. nature is a crime against God. That's why I say uh, whatever you believe in because okay so if don't you die. believe in Mother Please Nature don't die. you know God created Mother Nature so you rebelling against the system that he created. Don't ever give in. Trying to create some new system that may or may not be approved by, you know, the creator, um, which, you know, there are no documents saying thou shalt use electricity. So the line is blurred. However, there's no document saying that, which is why I use electricity. Um, there's no documentation saying that thou shalt not use electricity. So if you're using electricity to 
keep things natural, then keep things the way they are. If you're using electricity for the right things, like if I get on the stage and I and I, you know, use a microphone to uh, preach the Bible, that's not witchcraft. But 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 if I use electricity, which this is the most popular use of electricity is to which electricity is is optimized this to kicks more ass. efficiently be a this kicks tool ass. of rebellion against this the kicks natural ass. order. You know, a lot of weaponry involve electricity. The in, internal combustion, like I said, the 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 IC the ICE the 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 internal combustion in, engine of you know modern internal combustion engines rely heavily on electricity. And many wars have been caused as it's like, for instance, fire. Fire is definitely fire alone definitely is not witchcraft. However, however, it can be used to rebel. You can mance, you can be a pyromancer. Okay, a pyromancer. If I try to spit fire at God, then that's witchcraft right there. So a lot of people don't really understand. When I say witchcraft, a lot of people don't have that understanding of what witchcraft is. And according to those definitions of witchcraft, electricity can be in, in certain circumstances classified as witchcraft. And it is mostly used for mostly used for witchcraft you know most of the songs that come out are are rebelling against god most of you know most technology is technology that incorporates electricity is more likely to be used in opposition to nature to create something that that's not was not meant to be there They, oh, that's they. They telling me. I told them I did. I told them I record. I reported it. Anyway. Um. Yeah. So that's my understanding of which is a craft to you. Which craft to you. What I'm telling you is just search rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And that's at the core of witchcraft. I'm using um, witchcraft, you know, like a, if you make a potion. Okay, so okay, let me get let me get even more technical because this is not like when I discuss witchcraft, people automatically think this is a religious discussion. Just because I discuss something that religion seems appears to have answers to, okay, does not mean I'm having a religious discussion. Okay, you know, witchcraft predates witchcraft predates several, you know, the majority of religion. Witchcraft predates Christianity, it predates Islam, it predates Buddhism. Okay, witchcraft has always been around. Okay, so because I talk about witchcraft and demons and stuff, that's not necessarily a religious discussion. Like just because religion tends to have answers for search for some of these things, uh, does not make me talking about demons. Or wizards or sorcerers. Anyway, let me tell you something else about witchcraft. Okay, 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 okay. Another term 
for witchcraft is sorcery. And actually, now this is factual, this is factual information. The word pharmacy or pharmakia is the Greek word for sorcery. From a pharmacy is called sorcery. Okay, that's literally what it's called. When you say sorcery, when you say pharmacy, you are saying sorcery in Greek. So for somebody to look at me crazy because you know, I mean, which because I say I believe in witchcraft. It's not really something that you believe in. It's something that's literally there. Like, it literally exists. Witchcraft literally is real. You know, there's extensive uh, historical documentation. And, like, it is real. <laughs> okay, so it's not really something you could believe in. You understand? But those are the facts. Look at your own science. Do you consider medicine science? So, you know, even, you know, so-called science proves that, uh, you know, even the stuff that you're trying to use, the stuff that you're trying to use to disprove what I'm saying actually proves what I'm saying. To have you don't have to be a certain religion to to uh, know about witchcraft or anything. In fact, a uh, majority of practices of witchcraft are not religious. They call themselves you know, which is really uh, a witch. It's just witch. Well, no, the majority of people who practice witchcraft are not Wiccans, but you know, the organized witchcraft practicers that um, that uh, aren't occulted. That's the best way to put it. Organized witchcraft practices that aren't occulted, meaning you know what I mean? Like, uh, certain groups that I don't want, you know, Illuminati and all of that stuff uh, which all of those things are real there's which there is witchcraft everywhere so and with Illuminati and um, Freemasonry and all of that carrying on there is witchcraft involved in that and rituals and stuff this is mere fact this is fact you know I'm not a religious and I'm not, I'm, I'm not religious. I'll tell you that. I'm not a religious person. So for you to tell me that I'm being religious, it's funny. It's funny because I don't consider myself a religious person. Nope, I don't. But, uh, you know, the Bible talks about the sky. So if I talk about the sky, is that religious dogma? Am I trying to convert you to a religion because I talk about the sky? You see how silly, how silly that sounds? Hmm? How silly that sounds. Just anything that <laughs> is not, you know what I mean? Just go along with whatever we tell you to go. Don't don't try to explore things and figure out how to do things on your own. Just uh, just be a consumer. It, it really goes back to that consumer mindset. Don't actually try. Don't actually learn how. And I'm a holistic person. So like the medicines that I use instead of uh, instead of uh, pharmacia, I like to use holistic approaches. I, I would use something holistic. Now, if I have to go see a doctor, I understand for a surgery or something, a physician, it's fine to see. There's nothing wrong with being a doctor. There are physicians in the Bible. Nothing wrong with being a doctor. But if they recommend me some uh, pharmacia that I can do without, 
you know, understand. For instance, I was in a car accident um, and I was in pain and they recommended painkillers and I did not take those. I didn't get those painkillers because you know, I could deal. <laughs> I could deal. And that's how I approach that thing. But if you're if you're only physicians and a lot of things is if you are navigate if you take the time out to study how you should be living your life and whatnot and what foods your diet is so important stop uh subscribing to these fad diets uh keto atkins and it's very important which you, you do not need to do your uh your take into some game to uh sculpt your body or whatever no you you have to be very serious about what you eat and if you change your what you eat uh, uh so there's a diet you know ingrained in the culture and certain foods that you know you you routinely eat that you eat because you've been programmed by your culture to eat and this is what the people before you ate so they could survive okay so when you go against that realize and you choose some fad diet you better consult your doctor before you go keto you know consult your physician consult your doctor consult your nutritious your nutritionist Consult somebody who studies food and who's going to give you a balanced diet where you're not um, lacking nutrients. Say, you know, say you are. uh, Say for some reason you tight on money. And you have to eat mostly ramen noodles, you better go get a multivitamin because you don't know what uh, what ailments you are causing to proliferate in your system, which what sicknesses you bringing in into your body by uh, just sitting up here and changing your diet. You know what you what you, what goes into your body is very very important, very important. You should be very cautious. The things that you consume, this consume culture wants to dumb you down. They don't want you to know about pharmacia and want to dumb you down so that you don't think about what you consume before you consume it. But it's going back. It's, it's going to backfire because these people are going to do the wrong thing and then they're going to become bitter toward the system for failing them. You understand? But at the same time, you know what I mean? Whatever system you subscribe into, you need to look to its historical adherence. The people who have historically followed that, that, you know, went down that path. How did things turn out for them? You know, what what was the end thereof? (laughs) But yeah, that is it for my dailies. Congratulations. We done made it to 50 subscribers we're about to have uh live streams up in here okay uh welcome to season two thanks for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe i'll see you guys on the next video